Welcome to Other Levels. In today's video, we will continue to learn how to create this financial statistics system using Microsoft Excel without VBA codes. Together we'll start creating the third dashboard that's showing the sale process status. And you can get this template by visiting our online store, other-levels.com. This is the data table and its contains order numbers, dates, point of sale, the payment method, order assembly stage, buyer registration status, sale status, order delivery type, order amount, and finally the target. Let's insert the first pivot table. Projects are always interested in the percentage of sales achieved, so we will show it in a distinctive way. Let's add the total sales and the target to be achieved in the values field. Create the data table next to the pivot table. We want first to find the percentage of sales by divided the amounts achieved on the target. For the target percentage, simply use this equation, 100% minus the percentage achieved. I will use a scatter chart to only show the data labels in a creative way. First need to set X and Y values. Add 0 to X, and 1 for Y. I will use two formulas to maintain the data labels when update or change the percentage. Type SIN formula, for the X value will be linked with the actual percentage. Multiply by 2, multiply then add PI function, then open bracket and close bracket. And for the Y value, type CUS formula, then select target percentage cell. Multiply 2, multiply then add PI function, then open bracket and close bracket. The table is now ready. Select empty cell then insert donut chart. Next step, from the chart design menu, choose select data. Add new series. Add a name to this series. In the Y values field, add number 1 and comma sign, up to 58 times. Press OK. Remove all chart elements. Add some adjustments to the chart. Go again to the Select Data menu, then click on the New Series. Then change the chart type to Pie Chart. Remove coloring of the actual part, and for the target part add black color and set the transparency to 29%. Go again to the Select Data menu then click on the New Series. Now select Y values. Change the chart type to Scatter Chart. Choose one of the circles of Scatter Chart. Then add the X values. It remains only adjust the placement of the circles at the end and beginning of the graph. Click on the horizontal axis, then press Ctrl-1 to open Format Axis menu. 
Now I will specify the minimum and the maximum axis value range. The minimum value will be minus 1.15 and the maximum value will be 1.15. Repeat the same steps for the vertical axis. Now as you can see, the circles are located exactly in the middle. Add the data label. But we must keep the data labels vertically. Then from value from cells, select the range. We have almost done here, just we need to add good format for it. Perfect look. We will add some circles with different sizes and thicknesses around the chart. Select all circles with the chart and align to center and middle. We are not done with this part yet. Let's begin creating the sales process diagram. Insert a circle with white lines and make it 58% transparent.
Adjust the line transparent to the same as we did for the circles. Next, add the name of each stage. Now icons for each stage. This is the sales processes diagram and it remains to show how many customers go through each stage, and highlights the most frequently used stages. There are stages that purchase procedures must pass through, and they will not be moving dynamically. So. Let's adjust it to be a luminous shape. We will use symbols in the form of circles, not shapes. Enlarge the font, make it white, and remove the fill and border color. Add only shadow and glow to the shape. Copy the final shape, and put it in each fixed stage. This line will also be fixed, so we will adjust it. We have finished the formatting that we will apply to the shapes that will change dynamically. Copy the symbol and let's go to create the required formulas. We have three changeable stages, which are point of sales, payment methods, and customer registration. So we will create three pivot tables for each one of them. Copy 
Copy the names of the options at each stage from the pivot table to a new table on the right side. Paste the circular symbol we copied a while ago. Then look for a straight line in the symbols library. Add a circle and a line in each selection. Because I will set where it is located in the dashboard. Then later we will add the formula to it. We have to start the branches. We'll need two lines and a circle for this step. Copy the lines again to create a connection from customers to branches. Now the circle. Copy the format that we created before. Repeat what we just did in the branches to the website. Next step is to add the equation that allows the shapes to be shown or hidden. First, make sure that the amounts in the pivot table are arranged from highest to lowest. The equation would be, if the value in this cell is equal to the value in the first cell of the pivot table, appears this line, and if it is not, hide it. We will apply the same previous equation, with only changing the line by a circle. Let's test the formula and see if it will work when using the slicer. Thank you. 
As you can see it only shows the most frequently used stages. Now I want to make the icons in the lower used stages be less bright. The idea is to make a cover on it in black with 34% transparency. Same previous formula but with switching only the true and false. And use circular symbol for it. Repeat what we did for the rest of the stages. We're totally done with this chart. Let's go back to the donut chart to add the total sales. Need to show the total sales by types of delivery.
Next bar chart showing the number of sales by delivery type. Now the percentage of refunded sales. We will use pie chart, but in a different design. You can add any general notice or information not necessary to come from the database. Like for example the CRM speed percentage.
We now finished the third dashboard. And regarding the fourth one, please watch the video above to teach you an important thing that we can create dashboards using several ideas and designs and then merge them into one file so that we can create such powerful systems. I hope you learned something useful today. See you in the next video.